Hello. Today is the 24th of May, 2023. On the 22nd of May, 10 years ago, a young white man called Lee Rigby was legitimately going about his business in London when he was brutally and graphically murdered openly in the streets of London. There have been many murders in London, but this one was particularly troubling because we were able to watch it and the murderers wanted us to watch it. I don't want to talk much about Lee Rigby because it is not hard to find information about him except that I want to acknowledge that he was much loved, needed and wanted by his family. He went out and they expected him to come home safely. They would however have to see pictures of him being butchered like an animal with knives and a meat cleaver. I want to focus on the two black men that murdered Lee Rigby. You see, whenever I read a story about a black man committing a major crime in the UK, I feel bad and disgraced. I wonder what I could have done in concert with other people to make this individual a better person. He would have been a lovely baby boy. How did he turn so bad? I wonder how we as black communities can help each young black man so that they don't go from lovely baby boys into ungodly men. However, I think that with regard to the murderers of Lee Rigby, it is the Christian community that failed them in the early stages of their lives. You see, they were born into Nigerian Christian families, but we fail to convert them into disciples of Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ who, everywhere he went, he was doing good. Sadly, as a Christian community, we fail to prepare these young men for the evil days when nasty-hearted people will come to mislead them into Islam. These followers of Islam tried it with one of my relatives, Thank God that my relative came to me and because I knew quite a bit about Islam, I was able to assist them. However, the fact of the matter is that you don't really need to know much about Islam. You just need to know one important thing, that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that these Dawah followers of Islam can say about the Christian faith that cannot be defeated by the truth. The truth will always overcome Islam, and Jesus is the truth. John chapter 14, verse 6. I'll now share an Islamic incident about what happened to some converts when they came to Islam's prophet Muhammad. It is from a sahir hadith, meaning that it is correct. It, is not, it has no error. So Muslim cannot legitimately say that it is false. Some people from the tribe of Yuko came to the Prophet and embraced Islam. The climate of Medina did not suit them, so the Prophet ordered them to go to the herd of camels of charity and to drink their milk and urine. They did so, and after they had recovered, they turned renegades and killed the shepherds of the camels and took the camels. The Prophet sent in their pursuit and so they were caught and brought, and the Prophet ordered that their hands and legs should be cut off, and that their eyes should be branded with heated pieces of iron, and that their cut hands and legs should not be cauterized till they die. According to this incident, if these men were bad people, then after interacting with Islam's Prophet, did they become good people? And if they were good people before, did they at least maintain their goodness? You decide. Now, some people will claim that it is not the fault of Islam that these people chose to kill the camel herders and steal the camels. But they're missing the important point. One, these Muslim converts came to Muhammad, who is the best of the best in Islam. There is no better Islamic teacher and helper than Muhammad. Point two, 
it was diagnosed that they were not well. They were not healthy. This was an opportunity for Allah and his prophet to do them good. Point three. Islam's prophet ordered that they should drink camel urine and milk. It was an order. They were forced to drink camel urine and milk. Point four. Now, remember that these were converts to Islam. We don't know the circumstances by which they became Muslims. Perhaps they were forced. Perhaps their communities had been destroyed, their children sold into slavery, and their women raped by Islam's army, as per normal. Being forced to drink camel urine and milk could have been the last straw that broke the proverbial camel's back. So they exacted revenge. Point five. Another possibility draws attention to an Islamic narrative that has been recently debunked. You see, Islam claims that Muhammad was surrounded by polytheists. We are learning, however, from recently discovered rock inscriptions that by the 6th century, polytheism had virtually disappeared in Arabia. The deity that was mainly worshipped was the one God. And many inscriptions had crosses. The Bible says in Psalm 107 verses 19 to 20, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. So perhaps these men had heard that the true God merely sent his word to bring healing, and they expected something similar. After all, as many Muslims tell me on Speaker's Corner, kum fire kum, kum, fire kum, which means the Allah apparently says be, and it happens. However, since Muhammad only offered camel urine and milk by force, these men probably realized that they were being scammed, hence their violent reaction. Michael Adebolajo and Michael Adebowale entered Islam and descended into great evil. Sadly, these two Michaels did not access the living water of Jesus Christ, but chose camel urine and milk. They did not eat of the bread of life that Jesus Christ offers, but chose camel urine and milk. However, it is likely that they were deceived into Islam by people who hid the true face of the religion, as we often see at Speaker's Corner in London, UK.